Okay. The next step is to create the training data sets and train the models. Um, I'm in the models tab right now. It's the same data set as in the previous video. You can see by going back to segmentation um, and then actually finding one that we annotated. So there you go. Same data set. It's just in the models view. Um, let's close up this view uh, and create a training data set. The first one will be for membrane. So we'll use membrane for positive background for negative and I've actually also included some negatives in the membrane feature itself. So you can see these green boxes over here, which are obviously not actually green. Um, so generate set, save it somewhere, you can find it. And then on to the next one. So carbon, again, carbon has a positive background as the negative. And save it somewhere. And then finally, antibody platforms will use background again. Antibody platforms as the positive. See if we can actually find some of those. Uh, there we go. And then not antibody platforms as the negatives, which would be all of this. Um, generate set. There we go. On to the first model then. Add a model. Um, we used UNET Deep in a previous video, which usually works quite well. In the paper, we saw that VGGNet actually works best for the membranes. Uh, unless someone comes up with a better model, you can probably make VGGNet or maybe UNet Deep a little bit deeper. Uh, so these ones both have about 1 million parameters, whereas Pix to Pix has 27 million, if I remember correctly. So maybe a UNet with 27 million parameters would actually work better than Pix to Pix or work, would work better than any other model. But for now, we'll stick with VGGNet, which we know works well. Um, and then we'll use that for the membranes. So load the membrane training set, make it do 50 epochs. We can always stop it if it takes too long, uh, plus 100% negatives, and then 10 copies. And in this case, I believe that's about, actually, let's see, training data set for membrane contains 191 positive samples. So we'll have 1900 positive samples and then twice the amount of negative samples. Maybe actually that's a bit much. So let's set the amount of copies to five. There we go. Now, obviously, it's going to be a little bit slower than the unit deep from the previous video because it's a slightly larger model that actually predicts faster than unit deep because of the architecture uh, and also because the training data set is a lot bigger. I mentioned that during training, you can see the model's prediction results progressively get better. Uh, let's do so by cropping this frame, uh, selecting a bit of interest just to make it a bit faster and then anytime you move the crop region the prediction actually gets updated you can see that the loss is still at 0.1 which is fairly high uh, let's call this thing membrane um, and then by clicking or moving the crop region just a tiny bit or not at all just by clicking it you can update that prediction it's not always being updated on the fly because every time you do so you need to do that on the GPU and that actually slows down the training process. So it's better to be patient and not look at it too much. But if you're curious, you can always have a look. And here you can also see the effect of changing the overlap between the boxes. So if we set it to zero, then usually the uh, bits at the edges of a, of a frame, so over here and over here, uh, don't get predicted as well because those boxes don't fully fit within the uh, let's see for the for this for this model the box size is 64 so you have one two three and a half boxes and these half boxes are predicted better when there's some more overlap inside of them so with two thirds overlap it looks like this and then with zero the result there is a bit worse as you can see it's actually very bad uh, but that's usually at the very edge of a frame where you might not be able to do proper particle picking either because you'll be outside of the frame so not too worried about that um, so by now this model looks quite all right it picks up the membrane fairly well there's a bit missing over there but it's not too clear either to be honest um, let's set that to blend to make it a bit more appealing and then it does actually pick up some edges of the carbon film which is often the case but we'll get to that later so let's stop training a loss of 0 0.03 is usually fine or 0 0.027 um, and add another model carbon and again let's use a VGGNet because it works well 
open the carbon training data set, 50 epochs. Uh, what do we use here? 100 and five copies and train. Um, we can turn over the membrane one now so that we don't lose any computing resources to checking that one. And then uh, do the same thing we did before, which is see how the trading progresses. So when it just starts out, all the model param parameters are, are sort of random and uh, not very useful, as you can see. But then over time, it gets a little bit better. And here you see that the carbon one initially picks up a lot of membrane as being carbon, which is bad. But as it gets progressively better, that shouldn't occur as much. Uh, we are now, let's check, seven epochs into training, seven out of 50. So it's fine if it's not behaving very well yet. But as you can see, the it already stopped picking up most of the membrane. The threshold is also fairly low. By default, we set it to 0.5. Uh, but you can do whatever works best. So at the higher prediction values, it's almost only finding carbon. Again, you can see the boxing artifact. So let's change the box size a little bit to see more boxing artifacts, unfortunately. Let's make it lower then, see what happens. All right, fine. But still, the loss is 0.22. Uh, let's not bother it too much because we are slowing down the training process. Uh, let's just wait for a bit. But that will make the video boring, so let's not wait. This is alright. This is unfortunate. Those black spots over here are actually fiducials, I think that have been sort of masked out, but still you always see some fiducial artifacts in the uh, final data set. Uh, and so whenever there's a feature that's not properly included in the training data set, either as a positive or as a negative or as whatever, the neural networks can trip a little bit and, and sort of spuriously identify those things as your feature of interest as well, which is what we just saw happening for the fiducials being interpreted as carbon. But now it's starting to behave fairly well Still, it's predicting membranes closer to the carbon as being carbon, which is unfortunate, uh, but also fine, because usually we're not interested in picking particles close to the carbon anyway, because their images are a lot worse than the ones, uh, say, down here at the bottom of the liposome. All right. And again, the loss is still fairly high, so we'll wait a bit longer. activate membrane 2 and here you can see that without any model interactions present as we haven't set those up yet um, two models are allowed to both predict the same thing as being other things so these pixels are carbon as well as membrane uh, but let's say if we set both models to compete um, and the membrane one will emit competition the carbon one will absorb it meaning that for every pixel, if the carbon model predicts a value that is lower than that of the emitting membrane model, uh, the carbon model's prediction will be suppressed to zero. And then if we update the image, the carbon is now... Let's, see, let's actually have both of them emit and absorb. Ah, well, that's unfortunate. The carbon is now winning. So if we do it the other way around can see that the membrane one gets suppressed by the carbon. The carbon one does not get suppressed by the membrane as it is not absorbing. So let's have both of them emit and absorb. And then there you go. Still not great, not happy about this carbon bit over here, but overall the result is fine. Uh, let's stop this one as it's sort of yeah, it's, it's all right. And then add the third model, which will be antibody platforms. In the paper, we used picks to picks, which is a bit slow to train, so I'll not use it here. I'll just use a UNet deep instead, which is one of the fastest. Um, VGGNet is also fast, but for the carbon one, I thought it was a bit slow, so I'll leave it out for now. Same settings, uh, five copies, or let's see how many particles we've got. 82, so we can use some more copies. 10 copies and train.
And again, let's turn off the membrane and carbon ones and see how the training progresses for the antibody platforms model. At the start, again, not too well, but it's getting somewhere. great but if I remember correctly we actually also saw that before that the UNET deep model uh, misinterprets carbon edges as antibody platforms quite often so in hindsight you should have used the other model but we'll do that next time but it's starting to look like something uh, so yeah carbon and membrane are being picked up which isn't great but it's also picking up antibody platforms which you should do and in those same locations, the membrane and carbon models are not being activated. So we'll be able to distinguish between these two structures. Uh, training is progressing pretty fast for the unit deep. It could probably run for a little bit longer to get better, but let's just stop it now. And this is what we've got so far then. Um, right, so what we want to get rid of if we're going to do particle picking next is these interpretations of the edges of the carbon film as being uh, antibody platforms because if you're going to pick based on the prediction value and maybe the, uh, the thresholding and then the size of the of the blobs that remain after thresholding stuff like this will also get picked up in the end which isn't great because that will introduce a lot of bad particles into your data set so we'll need model interactions for that um, and we'll do that in the next video.